like I said, give a good account of myself. So this time, you know, I kept camp at home. Um, my wife's ready to drop any day now, you know what I mean? I have my, my third and last kid on the way. <laughs> so uh, I'm just enjoying the process. I have a, a wonderful team. I have, um, you know, this time I have a uh, top dietitian and stuff. The Itamonsons, the they're really helping me with my diet. I mean, we all we came into camp on weight pretty much, but I feel stronger with, uh, with them by my side, just showing me how to eat properly. I have um, my publicist, Julio, who is just taking a lot of weight off my back. Um, my whole team, my photographer, my, all of my brickboards. And, and like, like we said before, the campaign for this title is give me money, you know what I mean? Because I'm a humble guy, you know, and I'm tired of asking because when you ask, no matter how polite you are, they won't give it to you. So now I gotta go take it, you know? So, you know, it's, it's either let me eat at the table or I'm gonna take the whole damn table, excuse me, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Cool. What does it mean to you to train at home and to have you know, all the support from Rochester you know, in terms of a, a boxing community? Um, it means a lot because you know, I'm a pillar in the, in the community. And you know, you know, my famous saying is you can see me on TV and two days later you might see me at Wegmans buying my favorite food, you know? And um, I mean, I'm, like I said, I'm tangible. And um, it gives other people hope, you know what I mean? Coming from such a great city and, and, and such a prestigious city, it also gives people who aren't on that level hope to say, hey, over my house from the same neighborhood I'm from. You know, I grew up right on Bartlett Street. I went to number two school, I went to Madison, then I graduated from School of the Arts. So, um, and I grew up in the inner city, right over there, you know, close to the 19th Ward. So it gives those people hope to say, he can make it out of the mud, I can do it. So, I mean, it's like a personal responsibility for me almost. 21 pro victories, you've had a heck of a career already. Do you need this title to complete it, to legitimize it, whatever word you want to say? Is this, is this the last piece of the puzzle for you? Give me mine. This is, you know, this is, uh, I'm, I'm a firm believer in God and, and uh, you know, God works in mysterious ways. You know, I lost to Golovkin, who was, who was at the top of the division, and they shot me to the bottom. You know, and uh, I was inactive for 13 months. And uh, thank you to my promotional arm, um, Banner Promotions, along with Audi Palulo. Um, they got me back in the ring, you know, and, and they stayed true to their word. And, and uh, I got two solid wins. And... Now I'm back at the top of the division, you know, so, and the one title that I'm getting ready to fight for is the one title that's not tied up by Canelo and Golovkin. Mm -hmm. So this is almost like, you know, fairy tale. you know what I mean? Like, it shot me to the bottom of the barrel, and the one thing that they need, I'm about to have my hands on it. So either Golovkin or Canelo will have to see me. It's been a little uh, chippy on social media going back and forth between some of his supporters and right. your supporters and even yourself. Is that just hyping up for the fight or do you guys generally not like each other? That's a genuine dislike, you know, because he's very mildly, you know, and like I said, I'm a humble guy. You guys have never seen me get crazy, get loud, you know, um, belligerent or anything. This guy, you know, you push your buttons a little bit, you know what I mean? You never take me off focus. I've been doing this since I was six. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, don't let it take you off focus. I've been doing this for 24 years. If something like that takes me off focus, I don't need to do it chance to shut his mouth in his backyard too. That's gotta oh, be big for you, right? Man, listen, come September 16th, it's gonna be heck to pay. I gotta say heck, I'm sorry, I know I can't be out here We appreciate the PG. Thank you. <laughs> listen, I'm, I'm, you know, it, it, it's fired me up and it's, and it's motivated me because, you know, um, it, sometimes it's hard. We've been doing it so long and we've been doing it at top level for so long and obviously you guys see my accomplishments here behind me. You know, um, sometimes it's hard to get motivated. And I, I'm, you know, he's put that fire up under my behind so I said, okay, now I'm going to go in and give him the full onslaught of money, you know, and um, it's, it's When did you get the opportunity to do it in his backyard and represent Rochester on a global stage in London like that? Right. Is it the power of your community that's behind you in a situation like this? Absolutely. You know, um, you know when I step into like Walmart or Wegmans or if I'm just out and about, people see me. You know, everybody knows I'm fighting money. They're like, well, bring that title home, you know what I mean? So, you know, it, it, um, it definitely makes me more exciting. You know, I wish the fight was today. You know, I'm in shape right now. But, um, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it, it, it's, it, it makes me a little bit more excited, you know what I mean, to, you know, be homegrown and then have the people who are here be in tune, just as in tune, if not more in tune, as I am to fight. Speaking of your shape, who's Victor Conti? You've been working with you a little bit on I mean, some of this. Can you describe what he's done specifically for you? Vic Conti is just, um, he's, he's, he's very intelligent when it comes to um, proper rest, um, proper supplements, 
uh, how to take the supplements, you know, um, how to work on it. Because fighters, we're, we're tough guys. And it's, you know, we push yourself, push yourself, push yourself. And it's like some days pull back a little bit. You know I mean? I've just learned more about my body. You know, the, the, the way to make myself, to peak at the right time and be prime when it comes to fight time. You know, because sometimes you can overtrain. And a lot of people don't know overtraining is worse than undertraining. Because if you undertrain, you know, I only got eight rounds in me, so I gotta buy my time. But if you overtrain in your mind, you think, I can do 15 rounds, but your body says no. So, you know, sometimes you just, you just have to be intelligent enough to be able to say, let me pull back, today I'm gonna get more. And what Vic Conti does with, you know, the drawing of the blood, you know, the, 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 the testing your sweat, the testing your lactic acid levels, and they say, okay, we need to push you more today. Oh, you need to pull back today. And it's things like that that make a, you know, an athlete like myself, I'm in my prime now. You know, it's small things or all things, and it's those little things that will dictate whether you win the fight or not. You know, you it's a game of inches, you know, little things. Absolutely. You saw a pretty prominent boxer knock, uh, pick up a win this weekend. Right. Any thought behind the hand you kind of regretted his second boxing loss? Um, that was the second box of that. You'd be the second. Oh. <laughs> See, I like him. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, um, I, I really appreciated the fight. Um, I think what the public needs to understand is that MMA and boxing are two totally different sports. Even though they're combat sports, they're two totally different sports. But I had a higher level of appreciation for Conor McGregor after the fight because he came in and actually gave a great account of himself against the best fighter out there right now. And, um, he did it with supreme confidence, and um, I mean, like, I mean, he's left-handed like me, so, <laughs> so I mean, like all lefties. But uh, I mean, I, I really had a, a greater appreciation for him because, uh, you know, you get all these MMA guys, and a lot of MMA guys come into our gym, and you know, they talk big, and I'll do this and I'll do that, but they never show up. You know, he talked the talk and walked the walk, so you have to appreciate someone like that. And he did it against the best. He didn't go find some fighter ten and zero or three and zero that. You know what I mean? That nobody know. He went straight to the top guy and gave a great account of a great account of himself. So I have a great appreciation for Conor McGregor. And we can't let you go without talking about your get up right here. Oh uh, man, flashy. yeah. Everybody, today. everybody knows I'm a you know I'm, I'm a huge Michael Jackson fan. Um, you know that's that's who uh, I grew up watching, and now my son is a huge Michael Jackson. If he was here right now, he'd be moonwalking the whole gym <laughs> right now. I swear. <laughs> And today is Michael Jackson's birthday, so for my media day workout, we got a nice Michael Jackson playlist. I had to wear my Michael Jackson get up, you know, pay homage to the greatest. Did you have to schedule the fight after the due date, by the way? I mean, did it just work out, or? That just, that just ended up working out. Yeah. My wife's due date is actually the 12th, and the doctor told her yesterday that she, uh, she's probably gonna blow any day mm -hmm. now. So I'm really hoping that the baby comes before, because I definitely wanna be here for my child's birth. But, God doesn't make any mistakes. And it'll be a reason to, if not, be a reason to knock him out quicker so I can rush back home. <laughs> you know? When do you leave? I leave on the 5th. Okay. You ever been to London before? I've been to London. I fought over there in the amateurs and won, and I've been there as a pro twice, including this last time for the press conference. So, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. I've been to London before. Cool. Now, um, with going to London, mm -hmm. his house, fighting another technical left-handed fighter, yeah. uh, is there any kind of uh, skill that you think you can bring to it, any kind of technique that you think would give I'm you the just, I'm the superior thinker, I'm the superior athlete, you know, I'm superior in, in every way to this guy. You know, the only reason why he's undefeated is because he's never left this country and they've been paying to bring guys in that he can beat. You know, um, we all know boxing is a political game. You know, we all wish it was a game of where the best fight the best, but this is, you know, it's a business and they treat it as such. But, um, I mean, I just have to prove that come September 16th, you know, but honestly, I think I'm, um, you know, far superior to him in every way, physically, mentally, psychologically, my physical gifts, you know, even though he has one more fight than me, I think my experience of being in there with Golovkin and then the boxing you know, tournament, someone like John Thompson, who was beating the brakes off of one of his stable mates before he got knocked out, but he was up on the scorecards against Liam Smith. I mean, like I've been in there against top guys, you know? Yeah. Now, um Obviously, with your big family background in right. boxing and ha having your child on the way, how important is it for you to bring this belt back home, your world title? It's very important. It's very important because uh, I'm like I'm like the centerpiece right now. You know, I get to to, to tie it all up. You know, my, my uncle did great, beat Hagler. Um, my dad had an, uh, a pretty good 
uh, career at middleweight and super middleweight, but now it's my time to take it a step further. You know, as of right now, I'm more accomplished already, but it's always room for more. I'm never complacent with my, you know, accomplishments. Like once I win this belt, I'm gonna go win, wanna win four more belts. And then once I conquer middleweight, I'm gonna wanna go up to super middleweight, then light heavyweight, that's just me. I've never been complacent or content with my accomplishments. Whenever I accomplish something, I wanna do better. Great, now obviously there's another huge middleweight fight happening on that date. Right. Um, who are you leaning towards taking the lap one? Um, I'm on the fence, because who do I think is gonna win? Canelo. Who do I want to win? I want my rematch with Triple G, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. But um, I mean, here we're two years, re almost three years removed from that fight. And um, I'm older, um, wiser, battle tested, been on the big stage twice since then, so that won't shake me up like it did the first time. So um, with that, man, I, personally, I think Canelo is the better fighter, the more skilled fighter. Um, obviously, Canelo's a puncher, but you know, what's power to a missing target, you know? so. Um, I just think it's a great fight, and you have to appreciate Canelo and Golovkin for fighting each other, because they didn't do the Mayweather-Pacquiao thing and wait 70 years before they fought each other. You know, they're both fighting each other when they're at the top of their game in their primes. So you have to appreciate and, and um, you know, pay homage to both of them just for taking this fight, because neither one of them really have to. You know, they both can make millions without each other. So. Willie, yeah. are, are we expecting to see a knockout on that, on that night? against Billy Joe? When I fight, never can tell with a cat like me, man. It all depends on how I feel when I'm walking to the ring. You know, I, I might feel like boxing his ears off. I might feel like taking him out. You know, we'll see what happens when he takes the first punch. You know, if he's still there, then I'm gonna put numbers on him. If he's not, short night. Great. Can you tell us how important the support of your wife and family is to your success? That's very important on them, you know, as far as my family is concerned because my kids look up to me and, and um, you know, this is going to put the icing on the cake to daddy being the champion, you know, and, and you know, it's a bunch of new stuff, you know, uh, we moved into a new place, you know, we have new cars, I got a new baby on the way, and the new champion, I can get used to this new stuff, so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it, you know. Now, specifically, you addressed earlier saying that you were superior to your opponent, but I noticed that he made a comment that you were mentally weak what is your we know that's not true from your community but what would you like to say to respond to that say champ. anything it takes to get him in the ring we know i've been out of the ring a whole year my promotional arm and, and um my strategic partner uh, adrian clark who isn't here right now have been tr doggedly trying to get guys in the ring and we get turned down you know i mean big names too we're not talking about some little you know slouch fighters but big names have turned me down so if, if that's what it takes, if he has to get himself mentally psyched up by saying, oh, you quit against Golovkin and you know you have no heart and, and you're mentally weak, okay. Whatever it takes to get him in the ring on September 16th, if that's what it takes to build your confidence to sign that contract, by all means, say what you want to say. But come September 16th, when that bell ring, can't nobody save you. Ooh. You'll be locked in that ring with a monster. Let's go, champ. What's up, baby? How you doing, man? You're in the building, man. I just want to get...